Ladies and gentlemen, what is the point? The point is I joke about racism because racism is a fucking joke. In our society, we are too hung up, too strung out over color, white, black, and otherwise. The bottom line is true intelligence transcends all color barriers. Just like true asininity transcends all color barriers. That's right, you can find an asshole in any group. Don't judge people by their racial affiliation, but more so by their individual personality. Well, I wear this shirt whenever I can, nationally invoking God's greatest attributes is what N-I-G-G-A stands for. I wear this shirt because, you know, society has tried to teach us how to hate ourselves in so many ways, and they really, really are very good at it. You know, that's why black people killing each other in the streets all over the country, especially in my city of Chicago, which I just hate how often we're shooting each other. That's because we live in a society that taught us that we ain't gonna never get nowhere, we ain't gonna never be able to do nothing if we want something, we got to take it from each other. And I'm here to try to teach you the opposite, that we come from kings, we come from royalty, you know, and so we actually are the baddest humans on this planet. We need to lift each other up. So when I saw this shirt, which talks about our positivity, I don't know if you want to get the back of this shirt. It shows you how, what the original name was and what the, the original definition for this word was in all the African country, countries and continents what it meant initially. See, but then, I'm gonna turn around. Yeah. Then the Europeans, the European would take that same name, something that was really used to lift us up and use it to beat us down with it, like that's a bad thing. Same thing they do with Obamacare. You know, President Obama came up with a way of health care that people could afford so instead of calling it affordable health care, they call it Obamacare. Like they poking you with a bad word. You got Obamacare like it's a bad thing. But I know Obama cares and that it's a beautiful thing. So society has tricked us. It's, it's taught us how to forget how great we are. So that makes you fight a thing. So we're fighting each other and we don't need to be doing that. We need to be loving each other and lifting each other up. You know. So when I saw this shirt that takes this word nigga, which when we with each other, Man, we flip and spin it, have fun. Whoa, that's my nigga. You see that nigga? That's a bad nigga over there. But other folks will say it to you like it's something bad. You know, civil rights, man. I've been through civil rights. You shouldn't say nigga. That hold us down. A thing can't hold you down unless you give it power over you. And you only give it power over you when you let it hurt you. You can't hurt me by calling me no nigga. But if you white and you do it, I'm going to punch you in your face because I know you're trying to be disrespectful. You know, so that's when I wear this shirt. I try to wear it as often as I can. I try to wear it around as many white folks as I can. And I love it when they ask me what it means because I break it down for them. What do I do to keep my comedy so fresh after all these years uh, being a bit, I steal. Yeah, I steal as much other people's shit as I can. No, you know. To be current, you just have to be alive, man. All you do is pay attention. The comedy writes itself. You know, like, for instance, um, it's like the wrong people die while the wrong people live. Like, how can Prince be dead? And Trump's bitch ass is still alive. So the comedy writes itself. You don't even have to write it. All you have to do is just keep breathing. Just keep looking around, you know, and you'll see it. It's, it's, pretty, much, it's pretty easy. How have my fellow comics responded to my one-man show? I don't know. I ain't heard from none of them yet. You know, um, I did mention to my boy Chris Spencer. He's like, oh, man, I'll definitely be there. You know, big shout out uh, to Chris. Uh, I haven't really uh, tried to get the comics to come in and do anything with it. I'm just doing a show which is for the world, for the masses. That would be great. If they come out, Robert Townsend said he's definitely going to be there, you know, um, because the first show, man, gonna be, it's going to be bananas. A lot of people from the industry is coming, and hopefully a lot of comics will come, but I'm not here to perform for the comics. They too tough. They too difficult. I'm trying to get the regular folk, you know, so I, that way I can make them laugh a little bit more, sell them a book, you know, or CD or DVD. And remember, folks, I am hireable. Yeah, yeah, I, I do weddings, divorces, Passover, hangover. I do a party in the phone booth if you promise to call, baby. Call me. I'm ready to work. This one man show is definitely going to be on HBO or Showtime. You know, but but after we do about 30 cities, we're going to do 100 cities. And around the 30th city, like I am shooting the, the show on the third show. The third show is at 8 p.m. on Saturday. I'm shooting that with a three camera shoot. But since it's only my third show, I might not have got all the kinks out yet. So I'm going to wait till about the 30th, 35th show, and then we will be shooting it for national broadcast. Absolutely. I mean, my goal really is to go to uh, Broadway with it. So 
Let's see what happens. My, my projects are so strong. First of all, not only are we doing these books, I have a third book that's coming out, you know, and uh, like this book, the first one I do want to say, funny thing happened on the way to the White House. I knocked on the door and a brother answered. It really illustrates how great this man was. When he first got in office, everybody loved him. Families loved him. Uh, the children of every color loved him. But look, once he got in office, they tried to tear the White House in half before they let that brother succeed. But this President Obama on both sides of the White House, pushing it right back together. And down the bottom, them the collard greens, Michelle grew at the White House garden. Oh, he a cold brother, and Michelle's a cold sister. And we're not going to see another uh, president get this opportunity, a black man, in this country for a while. Oh, they might bring in an Uncle Tom like Ben Carson, but they're not going to bring in a real black person to be in any position of power. So we need to celebrate him, hold him up, tell our kids and our grandkids, okay, uh, the the second book, as you know, this is more about my life. Miss Innocent Goes to Cool School and other silly stuff. It talks about my addiction and my, survi my survival from that. It talks about comedy. It talks about racism. It talks about love. My third book comes out in another month. It's called Michael Goes Motivational. That's why I'm trying to do motivational speaking. And not trying, but I'm doing motivational speaking from a comedic platform. Those three of the projects. The most passionate project I'm on right now is called The Soundtrack of My Life. Well, we're doing a, a film in Chicago called The Soundtrack of My Life. And this movie tells the story about a king and queen who comes from Africa to remind a lost tribe of their heritage and their dignity. The tribe is called the American Blacks. And they ask the brothers to put the guns down. And not only do they put the guns down, but they walk away from the guns from shooting each other. And every penny that we make from this project goes to build music studios for inner city kids in Chicago. And we're hoping this program will extend throughout the country. So far, Twister has given me music for it. The Brat, uh, uh, Dave Hollister, GLC, uh, 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 Queen Nuisance, Solo Redline, and Snoop Doggy Dog got the music right now. Say so he gonna drop a verse on there. And once we get this out, we get the message out that we are worth we are a great community and we can do things and then more and more people help more and more people and that's how we get back to being great again. See, I remember when we used to have a neighborhood where everybody's parent was your parent. We looked out for each other, spoke to each other when we walked down the street. We don't have that no more. We so scared of each other. We cross the street and we see each other coming. That's got the reverse and we can reverse that. So the project is called The Soundtrack of My Life. Russell Simmons has come on to uh, help me produce it. and. I am excited about that because we killing so many people, killing each other in Chicago, black on black crime. I can't stand the pressure no more. And I'm from Chicago. The projects, Robert Taylor home, 4352 South State Department, 909. I will be from the projects for life, no matter where my other homes are. You know, so those are a few of my projects. Also, people who know me probably know me from Venice Beach. You asking me about am I right married, motherfucker? I thought you were trying to pick me up. What you want? <laughs> I wear the wedding band to keep motherfuckers like you away from me, man. <laughs> Why you all in my business and shit? I don't be fucking around on your job. That's right. I ain't asked you shit, though, did I? Did I? See, you over there talking shit, and I'm talking shit, and the only difference is, when it's all over, I get paid. Fuck you. <laughs> I did nine years of comedy on Venice Beach from 1986 to 1995. Five one-hour shows every Saturday and Sunday from noon until 5 p.m. Over that period of time, almost a million people stood on their feet and watched me do comedy. So I'm going back out there in, um, in May and I'm shooting a one-hour special called The King of Venice Beach. Mr. Leslie Small, who's directed everybody's comedy shows, is, is directing mine, and it's gonna be off the chain. I, I always built a special stage, I'm not gonna reveal it, but we, we built a special stage for it and everything, so I want everybody to come out to Venice and see it when I shoot it, cause you're gonna see that on HBO and Showtime. So anyway, I'm doing a lot of stuff, man. Them only the five projects I wanna tell you about right now. Oh, we got some more stuff coming.